Chem 213, Exam 1 Material, Part 2. Chemistry of Benzene, Electrophilic Aromatic Substitution. And then this chapter is also going to cover some other reactions other than that. So the most common reaction that we have of benzene, because the benzene ring itself is so stable, would be electrophilic aromatic substitution. And this is where we have a hydrogen, and I have all six hydrogens shown in this case. Normally, in a line structure, we don't show them. What's happening is a hydrogen is going to be replaced or substituted with an electrophile, and that's going to be now placed on our ring. All the other hydrogens will still be there. Typical reactions include chlorination, bromination, iodidation, nitration, sulfonation, alkylation and acylation. Those last two are also known as the named reactions of Friedel's Crafts reactions. Your textbook has a nice graphic of these reactions. I'm a sucker for when they go ahead and put it in a flask like this. So we're going to have a single hydrogen and the electrophilic aromatic substitution is going to be a halogen. If we have just an X there, you can call it a halogenation. Otherwise, if it's Br, it would be bromination. Cl would be chlorination and so on. Nitration is when NO2 gets substituted on the ring. Sulfonation is when SO3H gets substituted on the ring. Alkylation is was when an alkyl group, such as a methyl, ethyl, propyl, go on the ring. And acylation is when we have this carbonyl compound added to the ring. Electrophilic substitution reactions occur on aromatic compounds other than benzene, and they are a good test for aromaticity. Looking at the substitution reaction of benzene and its derivatives, the mechanism involves two steps. First, the addition of the electrophile to the carbon ring to produce this intermediate ion, followed by the loss of the proton to achieve the now substituted aromatic system. This is a general mechanism, and for this class, you're going to have more specific mechanisms for each of the reactions that you'll be responsible for. This general mechanism is just giving us a, a brief idea of what's going on. Let's take a look. So in this general mechanism, because the aromaticity is going to be messed with, we're going to go ahead and start off with our benzene with alternating double bonds. E plus is an electrophile, and we'll talk about what electrophiles we'll have. It's going to come on in and it's going to bond to one of the carbons. That carbon still has its hydrogen on there. Well now, this carbon right here has four bonds, so it can't have pi electrons to the left or to the right of it. So what this ion is showing us is these lines through here that look kind of like a stitching on a jean pocket here. What we're looking at are the electrons actually flying back and forth and back and forth. They can't go in a ring anymore. Now there's also a positive charge going on, so it's going to be attracted to that. So it's going back and forth and back and forth, and it doesn't like it. So what's going to happen is one of two things. Well, if you notice on the left-hand side of my ion, I also have an arrow of equal length going in the reverse direction. And on the right-hand side, I have an arrow going in the right-hand direction where I'm losing the hydrogen and the electrophile is on there. So what we see in this general mechanism is once the electrophile is on the benzene ring, it's just as likely for the electrophile to be taken off and revert back to benzene than it is for the hydrogen to be removed and the electrophile on there. So this is going to be a slow reaction because half the time the electrophile gets knocked off and half the time it doesn't. So those that get the electrophile knocked off have to undergo the reaction again if they want it to go to completion. Bromination of aromatic rings. The benzene pi electrons participate as a Lewis base in reactions with Lewis acid. The product is formed by the loss of a proton, which is replaced by the bromine. This is a bromination reaction. We have Br2, and our catalyst is an iron bromide. We saw the general reaction earlier where it had X in there. If we're going to do a bromination, remember you must use bromine in your catalyst. And what's going to happen is Remember, there's hydrogens on each of these corners. We just don't show them. Bromine is going to replace one of those, and this hydrogen came from the ring. For this class, not only do you need to know the reaction, but you also need to know how is the catalyst prepared for this reaction. The iron bromide 
is added as a catalyst to polarize the bromine reagent. So we can't just have bromine all by itself. So bromine itself, Br2, is a very weak electrophile. Bringing in the iron bromide polarizes the bromide, making it a much stronger electrophile. An electrophile is something that likes electrons. Bromine would normally have a negative charge. It's on the right-hand side of the periodic table. We know it's highly electronegative. So we want it to have a positive charge. We need to keep in mind that the benzene ring itself has a high electron density of electrons above and below the plane in that donut shape. So what's going to be attracted to it would be electrophiles. Now the bromine, being a Br+, and do you see the dots here? That means it's still associated with it. It's not a covalent bond. It's not even necessarily an ionic bond. It's kind of a weak bond. And now my bromine is polarized, and this bromine here can be the one that attaches. The reason why our catalyst cannot contain chlorine is because sometimes we might have one of these bromines get in the wrong spot and we would have a mixture. So anytime we have an electrophilic aromatic substitution using bromine or chlorine, they both have to be the same. So now we have a more detailed mechanism. Remember the previous one just gave us a general idea of what's going on. The formation of the product comes from an intermediate. Using bromine as our example, this would be the same mechanism for chlorine. We're looking at the addition of bromine in two steps. The first step, we have the pi electrons in our benzene attacking the bromine, and the pair of electrons that we're holding the bromine together are going to go to the Br, making a Br minus. Now, right now we have the nucleophile being our benzene ring and the electrophile being the bromine. Looking at this carbocation intermediate, it is no longer aromatic. And in fact, take a look at this structure. This one's different than the general mechanism. We actually have alternating double bonds here and here and a positive charge down here. We're going to see in a minute this is actually called the Wieland intermediate. And this is the intermediate you need to use for all our electrophilic aromatic substitutions. One of the advantage that we have on electrophilic aromatic substitution is the, the mechanism and the intermediate is the same for all of them. So in this case, bromine is on here, and now our catalyst is going to come in and grab this hydrogen. The pair of electrons that was there is now going to form a carbon carbon double bond here, and these electrons would be attracted to go there because there's a positive charge even helping them pull down there. So the slow part of this would be the first part, where we actually have the first bromine attaching to this. So that would be your rate determining step there. After that, it's very fast. If the bromine actually gets on there, it's very fast for the hydrogen to be removed. So let's go back into the text and make sure I've covered everything. So the reaction happens in two steps. In the first step, the pi electrons act as a nucleophile to Br2 in a complex with iron Br3. This forms a cationic addition intermediate from benzene and a bromine cation. The cationic addition intermediate transfers a proton to FeBr4- from Br- and FeBr3. And the last step, it restores aromaticity in, a, in contrast to addition reactions in alkenes. We get our double bond back. Aromatic rings are less reactive towards electrophiles than alkenes. Alkenes undergo the addition reaction, while aromatic compounds prefer to undergo a substitution reaction. Other aromatic substitutions. The reaction with bromine involves a mechanism that is similar in many other reactions of benzene with electrophiles. The cationic intermediate was first proposed by G.W. Wieland of the University of Chicago and is often called the Wieland Intermediate. So we saw that on the benzene reaction. This intermediate here is, the, is what you're going to use for all our electrophilic aromatic substitutions in the mechanism. Chlorination, the mechanism is described. It's the same as the bromine mechanism. In chlorination, we have a hydrogen being substituted with a chlorine. Again, Cl2 
FeCl3 catalyst and our minor secondary product of HCl in this mono substitution. Iodine itself is unreactive towards the aromatic ring, but we can get it on there with an oxidizing agent such as hydrogen peroxide or copper chloride. How the iodine is prepared, so this would be the example where I'd say, how is the catalyst prepared or the electrophile prepared? So let's take a look at this. Iodine reacts with our copper 2 to form two iodines with a plus charge and then copper. So what's going to happen is, once that is formed, the pi electrons are going to attack the I+. Plus. When you write out this reaction, when you write out this mechanism, I want you to write the I plus on the top, I2 plus CuCl2 on the bottom, and then show the curved arrow towards this iodine, so all of this would be required. This is the Wieland intermediate, we've seen that before, and because it's iodine that's on the ring, I'll put iodine here, I still have hydrogen here, and in this case, a base is going to come in and extract the hydrogen, and this pair of electrons is going to form the double bond here, and our product will be reinstated with its aromatic ring. The last of the halogens, fluorine, yields poor yields of monofluoro products. It's so reactive, you get more than one fluorine on there, so we don't even really talk about those reactions at all. Nitration with electrophilic aromatic substitution means NO2 is going to be substituted on the ring. What is required will be nitric acid and sulfuric acid as a catalyst. A minor secondary product of water will be formed and our catalyst will be regenerated. This is a combination of nitric and sulfuric that produces an NO2 plus and that's what's going to be the electrophile in this case. How the electrophile is prepared along with the catalyst is nitric acid reacts with sulfuric acid in a reversible reaction and you can see that we now have this oxygen here has two hydrogens on it and then that also undergoes a further reaction where water is expelled and now we have NO2 plus, the nitronium ion. In the mechanism itself, it's the nitronium ion that the electrons are attacking. Here's our Wieland intermediate. NO2 is on the ring. Water, remember water was given off in this step here. Water's going to come in, grab that hydrogen, and the pair of electrons that are holding this hydrogen are going to form the carbon-carbon double bond here. It's going to reinstate the aromaticity. Aromatic sulfonation. The sulfonation reaction is when we take the hydrogen and we substitute it for SO3H. How this happens is we use SO3 and sulfuric acid. It's a mixture of those two. The reactive species is sulfur trioxide or its conjugate acid. And this reaction is reversible. Taking a look at our sulfur trioxide, again how the electrophile becomes the electrophile using the catalyst. SO3 reacts with the sulfuric acid and it forms, see the sulfur here now has an OH on here. This is the species that's going to be our electrophile. The pi electrons from the benzene is going to be attracted to this positive sulfur. A pair of electrons are going to go back up to this oxygen causing a minus charge. Again we have our Wieland intermediate. We already have our SO3H attached to it. A base is going to come in, grab that hydrogen, the pair of electrons, are going to cause a carbon-carbon double bond here, reinstating our aromaticity. And now we have benzene sulfonic acid. Benzene sulfonic acid is typically drawn SO3H, but I like that you're able to see how the structure is put together here. Well, now that we've made benzene sulfonic acid, they're actually great intermediates. If we take a benzene sulfonic acid and heat it with sodium hydroxide followed by neutralization, we can actually change the SO3H to an OH group. What we're going to learn in a future chapter in 1710 that this benzene must be alkyl substituted. You have to have a CH3 group on here for this reaction to occur. But we can change an SO3H using this set of reagents to an OH group.
alkylation of aromatic rings. We're putting more carbons on carbon. That's pretty much what Friedel's Crafts' whole goal in life is to put more carbons on carbon. Alkylation, we're going to attach an alkyl group such as methyl, ethyl, propyl to our benzene ring. The carbocation is the electrophile and the catalyst is aluminum chloride or copper chloride and aluminum chloride is the classic catalyst that's used for a Friedel's craft. I've also seen this reaction sometimes written with the iron form, but I would prefer for you to use the classic aluminum chloride or the copper chloride when you see this. So this reaction, we're going to have some sort of alkyl chloride here. Where this R group is going to connect is where that chloride was because that chloride is going to leave and whatever, wherever it was connected, that's where it's going to be connected to your benzene ring. And again, we get a minor secondary product of HCl. This H come from, came from the original benzene ring. Here's an example of a mechanism for a Friedel's Crafts alkylation. I'm going to go ahead and have my R group as a 2-chloropropane. It's going to react with the aluminum chloride and it's going to form a carbocation. It's this carbocation that is going to be our electrophile. So our nucleophile, benzene, is going to contribute a pair of pi electrons to this cation. And what's going to happen? Again, we're going to get this Wieland intermediate. Notice that my chloride was on carbon number two. The carbocation is on, the plus charge is on carbon number two. And my attachment is on carbon number two. The aluminum chloride compound now, the ion, is going to come in and grab that hydrogen. The pair of electrons, in fact, technically this arrow should be a little further over. I'm sorry that it's not there. I need you to fix that. This pair of electrons, like we've seen in all the Wieland intermediates, is going to come down here and form the reform, the carbon-carbon double bond, regenerating our aromaticity. And now we have more carbons on carbon with Friedel's Crafts alkylation. Friedel's Crafts alkylation actually has a few limitations we need to know about. Only alkyl halides can be used. Aryl halides and vinyl halides do not react. So here's an example of an aryl halide when it's on an aromatic ring. That's where the word aryl came from, aryl, aromatic ring. And so this cannot be used in a Friedel's Crafts and neither can a vinyl. When you have something directly bonded to a carbon of a carbon-carbon double bond, that's the vinyl, pos vinyl position. So these two don't react. You can only have alkyl halides. You can't have either of these two. Another limitation is it won't work on rings that contain an amino group or a strongly electron withdrawing group already on the ring. It's often difficult to stop after a single substitution, so we, don't, we can't guarantee we get a mono substitution. Sometimes we get more than that. And then we also can have occasional skeletal rearrangement of the alkyl group and form a mixture of products. At the end of this chapter, we're going to see the classic example of this. I don't know why they wait to the end of the chapter to show you this, but that's where they're going to show it to you. Next, we're going to look at the Friedel's Crafts isolation of aromatic rings. Now, I just noticed on the slide, I don't have Friedel's Crafts written here anywhere. So please, somewhere on your slide, write down this is also a Friedel's Crafts reaction. The reaction involves an acid chloride. This here is an acid chloride. You should also add acid chloride to your group. Of different compounds you need to know. If we had the same setup but we had an X here instead of a chloride, it would be an acid halide. If I had a Br here, it'd be an acid bromide. That's the name of the groups. All right, so we have an acid chloride here. And just like on the other Friedel's craft, our attachment point is going to be where the chlorine is. So the chlorine is going to be our leaving group and the attachment is going to be the carbonyl group. It's going to stay as a carbonyl group this is where it's going to attach to the benzene ring, and whatever R group you have here is going to remain. We also use a catalyst of aluminum chloride, and again, if you notice, I have my C double bond O. This is the same R group from here, and the attachment point is where the chlorine was. Minor secondary product of HCl. So our book gives us a specific example using acetyl chloride. AlCl3, they're telling us in this reaction it needs a little bit of heat. Remember, chlorine is going to be our leaving group. The carbonyl carbon is going to be the attachment point. And because my R group is a single carbon, 
I'll have a CH3 group here and a minor secondary product of HCl. The mechanism of the friedels crafts acylation is similar to the one we saw for the alkylation, but it doesn't have the same limitations. We don't have rearrangement and we don't have multiple substitutions. So let's take a look at how our electrophile is prepared for this reaction. We have our C double bond O with our chloride. Remember this chloride is going to be our leaving group, our attachment point. Aluminum chloride. And what's going to happen is we're going to have an acyl cation and it's in resonance. So it's going to go back and forth between these two. When it's in this form, so down here, take a look at the mechanism. We have our nucleophile attacking our electrophile. So we have the pi electrons from our benzene ring going to this cation. Remember, it's positively charged. It's attracted to that. We have our Wieland intermediate. We have our carbon double bond O and our R group. It's attached. Our aluminum chloride is going to come in and grab that hydrogen. And the pair of electrons that was holding on to this hydrogen is going to go over here, forming a carbon-carbon double bond reestablishing our aromaticity. And again, we have a couple of minor secondary products, HCl and AlCl3. But because the AlCl3 is a catalyst, we normally don't include catalysts in the reaction. That's why in the general reaction we have just HCl shown.